Hello, welcome to Biograd TV. If you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. How Comoros Got Independence France first established colonial rule in the islands of Comoros in 1841. The first French colonists landed in Mayotte, one of the few major islands, and entered into a treaty with the chiefs. The treaty was signed in April of 1841. French settlers, French-owned companies, and wealthy Arab merchants established several plantations in the island. In fact, about a third of land on the island was used to grow export crops. Mayotte was purely a sugar plantation colony. The other islands were used to grow Yilang Yilang, vanilla, coffee, cocoa beans, and sisal. In 1908, the islands were unified under a single administration and the French colonial governor-general of Madagascar was given the responsibility of administration of the whole region. In 1912, the colony and the protectorates were abolished and the islands became part of the colony of Madagascar as a province. In the early 1960s, a growing number of politically conscious Comorans who resented what they thought to be French neglect of the Comoro Islands began to strongly consider independence. They were especially energized by the wind of independence that was sweeping through the African mainland in the 1960s. The independence movement, however, did not start in the Comoro Islands but among Comoran expatriates in Tanzania. These expatriates founded the National Liberation Movement of Comoros, that is, Mouvement de la Libération Nationale des Comores Molinaco, in 1962. Molinaco actively encouraged the cause of Comoran independence abroad, particularly in the Organization of African Unity OAU. It would take another five years before the movement began to extend its influence to the island, though secretly. Another party was founded in 1968 called the Socialist Party of Comoros, that is, Parti Socialiste de Comore Pasoko, and was well supported by students and other young people. But in all, politics in the 1960s were mainly dominated by a social and economic elite, which was conservative and pro French. During the period when Comoros was a self-governing territory as an overseas department, there were two main conservative groups, the Parti Vert, that is, Green Party, which later became known as the Comoros Democratic Union, that is, Union Democratique des Comores, UDC, and the Parti Blanc, that is, White Party, later reformed as the Democratic Assembly of the Comoran People. RDPC. Dr. Saeed Mohamed Cheikh, who was president of the Parti Vert and of the governing council, was the most important political leader in the islands until his death in 1970. Ahmed Abdallah, a wealthy plantation owner and representative to the French National Assembly, was the second most powerful member of the Parti Vert and succeeded Cheikh as president of the governing council soon after Cheikh died. The Parti Blanc, under Prince Said Ibrahim, was the opposition. The violence clamped down on a student demonstration in 1968 and the death of Said Mohammed Cheikh in 1970 were the catalyst that pushed Abdullah, an otherwise conservative politician, and the other leaders of the Parti Vert and Parti Blanc to press for independence, although they still hoped to maintain cordial relations with France. The Party for the Evolution of Comoros, that is, Parti pour l'Evolution des Comores, which was a coalition of conservative and moderate parties, was in the forefront of the independence push. The coalition excluded Pasoko, which is considered too violently revolutionary, but co-opted Molinaco for a period. From 1973 to 1974, the local government negotiated with France and issued a common declaration on June 15, 1973, 
defining the means by which the islands would gain independence. Part of the event that necessitated the negotiation was a pro-independence riot in November 1973 in Moroni, in which the buildings of the Chamber of Deputies were set on fire. That same year, agreement was reached with France in 1973 for the Comoros to become independent by 1978. But the deputies in charge of Mayotte refrained from the agreement. Referendums went on to hold on all four parts of the island. Three overwhelmingly voted for independence, while Mayotte voted again and has since remained under French administration. With the outcome of the referendums, the Comorian parliament did not wait till 1978 earlier scheduled, but on the 6th of July 1975, it passed a unilateral resolution declaring independence. Ahmed Abdallah, leader of the party Verde, proclaimed the independence of the Comorian state and became its first president. Unfortunately, just 28 days after the declaration of independence, the government of Abdallah was overthrown by a coalition of six political parties called the United National Front. Since then, Comoros has experienced more than 20 coups or attempted coups. What have we missed out of this history? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.